This is the Unify Flex 2.5 gig PoE switch. And it's a bit unique, not just because it has PoE++ input, that's three pluses, but also what's up with this combo port, RJ45 and SFP+. Welcome to the channel. My name is Bogdan Schperny, founder of Apex One IT, and we do small business IT. So let's take a look at this new 2.5 gig PoE switch. They also have a non-PoE version of it. And then we'll compare it to the Pro 8 PoE, the Pro Max 16 PoE, the Enterprise 8 PoE, and maybe even the Ultra 210 watts, maybe. Just maybe this will work for some of you guys. Here's the switch. They have a good origami packager there. Okay, so that's our wall mount with the hardware and the template with a built-in level. And this is a pretty light switch, as you would expect. It comes in about one pound, a little over that. And it's roughly eight and a half inches like this, shorter four inches and 1.3 inches tall. It does have the soft pads here for just laying it, setting it down on your desk. Nothing on this side. Everything ends up being on one side. So reset button, your power, input, outputs, LED indicator, all on one side, that's nice. And these here are the eight 2.5 gig ports. On the PoE version, they're all PoE++. Now, depending on how you're going to power this, and I'll get to this combo here input in a second, we can see it can handle PoE in plus, plus, plus. I'm not even sure which switches have that. I know some of their newest ones do, but with plus, 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 you can get 57 or up to 57 watts of PoE budget. So out of these eight ports, or with PoE plus, you can get up to 12 watts out of these eight ports total. But what makes this very powerful is that with the AC input, which is not included with this device, and we'll get to that in a second, but with the 210 watt adapter, you can get up to 196 watts of PoE budget. With this 10G, so 10 gigabit ethernet, well, ethernet and SFP plus, and they actually have a nice, uh, their little white cap here. What this means is that you have essentially two ways to power it or two ports to power it and two ways to receive or transmit data. The first way to power this is that you can just grab a RJ45, which is what I have here. Now it's up to 10G, but it'll work on one or 2.5. And you need a minimum of PoE plus to power this. Plug that in. We see it's getting power now, and I'll show you later in the unified dashboard here. So that's one option, and in the most, I would say, optimal setup, you have PoE++++, and this is a 10 gigabit ethernet connection. What you can also do if you need more PoE budget, but you also just want to use an RJ45, this is when you buy the optional AC adapter to plug in there, and that will give you more PoE budget if you need that. The second option is that you can grab this SFP plus cable. This is that cable you may be familiar with other unified switches. You can use this and if you plug that in, now I don't have it plugged in on the other side, but it will transmit data on the SFP plus port at 10 gig. So that can be a 10 gig, but your RJ45 can give it power. So even if your ethernet connection here is only one gig, you can still have a 10 gig uplink to your UDM, for example, or another Unify switch. And then finally, if you know you don't need this RJ45, you can still have a 10 gig connection here and just give it that power with the AC adapter. Then these accessories, it's quite similar, or this one's actually, I think, exactly the same as the one that comes with the Ultra. So you're familiar with the three different variations of the Switch Ultra, which is this right here. It also has PoE in, well, plus plus maximum. And yes, it does have the same kind of adapter play as you can see. So all the different adapters should work with both of these switches. The wall plate, the one that you actually screw in and mount, and it has, of course, all the hardware included with it. This is where you would use the this template that it has to mount it, position it this way or that way, and you can move this level if you need to to that position. And then this will slide in and it has a nice kind of flush mount. I would say, look at that. You can barely sticks out at all. So it will sit right tight against the wall. 
Optionally, instead of the included wall plates here, you can also get a magnetic wall plate or magnetic mount that you can use as well. So that way you can place it, you know, like some kind of metal cabinet. It looks very similar to this. It just doesn't have the holes for this. And obviously it's magnetic. Let's click into the Flex 2.5 PoE and let's check out what we have. So first of all, in settings, very typical of all of your utility switches. You can name it static IP if you need that. You can disable the global and customize this, set the correct priority. For example, by the way, this is two layers down. Okay, so that's good. You can turn off the LED on the front. It doesn't make a big difference. It's just the blue and the white LED indicator. The status light, not for the ethernet ports. And you can locate the this device. It's just going to flash that LED indicator, remove it, restart it. Now what's insightful here, I would say is under overview. So we have a quick overview of the port manager. So quickly you can see things, you can restart things, PoE ports straight from here, which is nice. And the main thing I want to show you right now, so I have 37 watts of PoE budget and that's because I'm powering this with a PoE++ switch. And as you can tell, it has a 10 gig uplink connection. And now this is on that RJ45 port, kind of the option one way I showed you to connect this. And you can see that SFP plus is disconnected right now. And then we're using about 3.5 watts. And that's because here, let's go into port manager. I also have the Flex Mini 2.5 connected right now. So it's giving power to that switch. So it has a 2.5 gig connection to that switch, which makes sense. And then I have a computer on there that's also on 2.5. It's just kind of cool to see a RJ45 have a 10 gig connection, right? This indicates right here by color, which kind of uplink you have. So we're on 10 gig on port nine. That's pretty cool. So everything is working as it should be. This is a layer two switch, which for like 99% of people, I would say that's fine. It also doesn't have things like some of the other switches do. So if you click on a switch, for example, like this, and you go to manual under advanced, it won't have port aggregation here. So that's not one of the options, kind of popular option there. But let's go ahead and look at the kind of comparisons, other switches that maybe are comparable. I wouldn't say this USW Ultra is really that comparable, but although you could, it does have a lot of PoE budget you can get when you get the highest model. Also with the 210 watt adapter, but all these ports are one gig. Okay. And it also doesn't have an SFP plus port. These three switches to the right of the flex 2.5 gig PoE is the ones that I would compare it to. They're not exactly the same, obviously. That's what we're comparing them. But before we do so, something to keep in mind is those other switches, they come with the power supply included in the price. The flex here, it does not. You know, depending on your needs, you might need the AC adapter, the 210 watts, that's $80. So your total comes out to $280. Now you're thinking, man, why didn't they just include this with the switch? Well, because otherwise this switch will cost $280. So there's, uh, so it's great that they kind of separated out because even how I'm using it right now, I don't need that separate AC adapter. It's just that if we're comparing it to those other switches, I want you to keep that in mind that you're kind of starting at the 280 price. Although I like that they separate this out again for the different kind of PoE budget that you can get with this, which is nice. If you want to go a little bit higher and you want a switch that has eight ports and it has SFP plus, then you're now looking at the Pro A PoE. So this comes in at $350 roughly. As you notice right away, they're all one gig ports, but you do get two PoE++ ports and you get two 10 gig SFP++ ports. So obviously if you really need a 2.5, then this probably won't work for you. I just want you to understand what's out there. And this also has about half of the total PoE budget. Again, if we're compa comparing it to the $280 version of the Flex 2.5 PoE. And not only that, but this one also is layer three. It also has port aggregation LACP. So something to consider if you need that, which could be useful if you have like a Synology NAS and you want to use the kind of built in one gig ports on it, then you want something like port aggregation, which the flex does not have. Now, if you want more ports and you also want 2.5 gig, then you're now looking at about $120 more. And that's the Pro Max 16 PoE. That's about $400. So it has 2.5, but only four of them, but they are PoE++. This is also layer three, port aggregation. It also has the ether lighting, which is of course nice. And the total PoE budget is roughly the same. So the flex is, I think it was 196 watts max. And this one is 180. 
and it comes with the power supply, right? That's in the box, it's included, so you don't need anything else. And you also get the two 10 gig ports as well. And not only that, but I mean, this switch kind of looks like a rack mountable one, and it is with an additional accessory, but it comes with a way to mount it kind of against the wall, like they show right here as well. So it can be mounted in a similar way that the Flex 2.5 can. So that's also nice if you're looking for that kind of mounting option, but you need the extra features, you want the layer three ethernet, more ports, then this is a pretty good option. And finally, I'll mention there is the Enterprise 8 PoE. It's kind of the big brother of the Pro 8. So instead of the one gig, it has the 2.5 gig ports. It's also about half the PoE budget, 120 watts versus the 196 watts on the 2.5. And it's also a lot more expensive though. So this guy comes in at $479 like twice as much depending how you're uh, including that AC adapter for the 2.5. All these ports here are 2.5, uh, but not PoE++, just PoE+. It does have two 10 gig SFP plus ports. And so that's why the budget, by the way, is uh, half of that as well. So I would say in general, if you don't need the layer three, you'll need port aggregation. I mean, then you don't want to spend the 479. You might as well go with the flex just double check you can always go in here tech specs and just double check or and i'll include this in the description where you can find this there's just tech specs and you can select exactly which switch you want to compare it to and that way uh, you can see just exactly what you need and choose the right one i think the best application for the 2.5 here it's kind of like they show right here so you already have kind of a large switch and they can just power this flex 2.5 PoE. i think that's the best way because you can actually get away with the $200 version. Uh, there also have, I should mention, there is the, just the Flex 2.5 as well. So this one comes in at 159. It's the same thing. Uh, it, it has an included power adapter and that's just because it doesn't need uh, more power for PoE. So you, you could look at that option first of all, if you just need like a production room just to power or not to power, but to connect a couple computers like a video production, right? Just like they show here again then the non-PoE might even work. But if you need maybe access points, a desk phone, things like that, that's where you get in the PoE. The other reason you know you might want to deploy this is if you're trying to run, for example, one of the newer enterprise access points, for instance, or even, so the U6 enterprise, yes, yeah, so this one also has a 2.5 gig uplink and you can even take advantage of PoE++ on it. But also if you just look at all the Wi-Fi 7 ones, for example, like Pro Wall, all of these other ones, uh, this new one coming out, U7 Pro Outdoor, it also has a 2.5 gig uplink and PoE Plus. So if you're deploying these somewhere and you have a couple of them where you need to extend, you know, somewhere far away from your rack, then this 2.5 Flex, that's probably pretty good. Those are just my thoughts. So if you have other ideas, ways, applications where this can be used, please let us know in the comments section down below. Now, if this switch doesn't work for you, then you probably need a larger switch. So click here and you'll see my review of the Pro HD switch that has all the ports at 2.5 minimum and PoE++ on every single port. But if you actually don't need any PoE, you just need a couple 2.5, then you can save a lot of money by clicking down here. And that's the new Flex Mini 2.5 gig. If this video was helpful to you, please go ahead, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.